On this episode of The Natural Birth Talk, we are talking about ultra-processed foods and how they affect mental health with Coach David. Instead of giving you a sneak peek for this episode, I want to leave you with some words that Coach David didn't get the chance to say in the episode, and that is that we need to be compassionate with ourselves. When we switch from ultra-processed, convenient foods to more natural, whole, real foods, we have to be compassionate with ourselves, give ourselves grace, and not beat ourselves up if we make a mistake and slip back into those ultra-processed foods. It's a process. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Hi, I'm Rachel Manns, owner of The Natural Birth Site and this podcast, The Natural Birth Talk. Here, you'll learn all about different natural aspects of birth, pregnancy, and postpartum. Remember, none of this information should take the place of a care provider and is not medical advice. Birth is not a medical emergency. Thanks for listening. Hey everyone, welcome to the Natural Birth Talk. Today I am here with David Greenwald and we are going to talk about how ultra processed food affects mental health. Uh, but before we get started, I'm going to let him introduce himself. All right. Nice to meet you. Great to be here, Rachel. So I am David Greenwald. I'm a certified health coach. I've been coaching people for over 30 years. I started way back in the mid 80s when I owned a gym, which I, I haven't owned for a long time, but that's where I really started. I was 22 then. Just okay. so people can start doing math to figure out, you know, where I <laughs> where I'm at today. But I just to kind of you know give people just a, a short background. I've always yep. been interested in fitness, and as even as a kid in grade school, I wanted the President's Council on Physical Fitness Award. Mm -hmm. I wanted that award. I got a patch and a sticker and a certificate. And I don't know why when I was ten or eleven I wanted that award, but I did. And as time went on, around my senior year of high school, I started training, uh, kind of doing mm -hmm. bodybuilding, and then I went into powerlifting. And uh, so I've been doing that a long time. And throughout all of this, I've run fitness companies. And if you can believe this, I was here when the internet started. So people were emailed, <laughs> emailing me, and they were saying, Dave, if you could just real quick, you know, we know you've done bodybuilding, powerlifting. Could you tell me real quick how I can lose 30 pounds and keep it off? And I tried to answer in an email, but I felt like I was just giving a bumper sticker answer. Yeah. And I really wanted to help these people. So I said, I, I've got to do it right. So I wrote a book, created an online program when there was mm -hmm. no high speed internet. <laughs> it was, it was <laughs> just a big deal. <laughs> yes. It was like, there was dial up. You couldn't be on your home phone and be on the computer at the same time. You know, it was all of that stuff anyway. But I had a passion for it early on, so much so that I mm -hmm. sold that other company that, that it did incredibly well. And I went all in on Linus Lifestyle University. And I've been coaching people virtually since 1999. So here I am, and I love what I do, super passionate about it, and really excited about kind of how things have evolved, how my knowledge has evolved, kind of where we are, and, and, and the understanding of where, where people are struggling and how we can help them. That's awesome. I think you and I have similar beginnings because my I mine's not necessarily for fitness itself, but nutrition, the nutrition side of things is where I started and I started at a really young age. I also wanted that president president award in in elementary school. I don't know why, but I really wanted it. I know. And I know. In my day, we had to roll rocks. There was no, there were no <laughs> wheels yet. But no, but we had to throw a baseball and do a broad jump and do a variety of things. And I just thought that was so cool. And I just, I just wanted that. Yeah, I think for me it was the word president. But well, yeah. yeah, but it started there. And then I remember in high school when I took health class, nutrition was like my favorite topic. So I've had an interest in that for so so long. And then when I decided to become a birth doula. The nutrition side of things really, really stood out to me. And it's one of my favorite things to talk about because I think it is so, so important when it comes to mental health. Yes. I think, you know, we were just talking before we started recording that when you look online at a lot of these articles, articles about mental health specifically, they rarely address nutrition. Yeah, it's it's unbelievable. It, I, I just, it's staggering to me that it's, that it's not addressed uh, more and considered more in just common, published, mm -hmm. good, you know, well done, you know, um, I'm going to say authoritative sources, mm -hmm. not just somebody's blog, but, mm -hmm. you know, high level government, high level educational, high level university type of, you know, uh, published sources. I want to say too, because I, for I forgot that during my powerlifting days, you know, I'm only 5'10", all right, or I'm 5'10". Uh -huh. But in, during my powerlifting days, I had gotten to 235 pounds. It was a get big, get strong. So yeah, 
at some point I said, that's enough, David, mm -hmm. David, David, you don't need a pound bag of M&Ms as a pre-workout. <laughs> you know, that's not a legitimate pre-workout. And <laughs> so I said, all right, I got to get it off. So I did, a, you know, I, I went with a very evidence-based approach and ended up doing a show or bodybuilding show. And I got those 50 pounds off. And I've kept those 50 pounds off for 25 years. So I'd want to let, I'd at least want to let the listeners know that even though I've had this super strong interest in fitness, uh -huh. there was a time where I was quite heavy and that I got those 50 pounds off and have kept them off for 25 years. And I, I say this, even though I have that strong interest in fitness, I have zero gifts for being <laughs> lean unless I pay attention and follow the same guidelines that I tell everybody else. All right. So that's. Yeah. That's all I want to say about that. But yeah, as yeah. far as mental health goes, it's it's incredibly important. Yeah. Well, and you were realizing that it's not just about being strong or not just about being fit, but you have to be healthy at the yes. core. And there are there's studies out there that show how vitamins and different vitamins and minerals and things play a role in our mental health. But for some reason, our culture just doesn't address that. You know, to me, it should be like, that's the first thing we should go to, right? That's yeah. easy. Address the way you eat. But that's actually really hard for a lot of people. So I want to jump into then, I guess before we really, really get started, is there anything that you really want the listeners to know or understand? I mean, we talked a lot about you, but about, you know, maybe what ultra processed food means or something like that. Yeah. 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 Let's, let's do that. So what I like to do is, well, let me just say, say a couple of things about that. There, there are over 3,000 industrial additives that mm -hmm. are in our food supply as far as our produced mm -hmm. food. Well, especially um, in not, America, right? Like in, other countries, a, lo States. a lot of the things that are allowed in our food here are not allowed in other countries. Yes, it's true. And and there's a little bit vice versa, but mostly what you said is true. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly it's, the, it's that way. And the thing is, is that we kind of have an assumption with having a Food and Drug Administration, Department of Health and Human Services and so forth, U U.S. Department of of Health, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and alcohol or agriculture and so forth, that we are protected. We are mm -hmm. we are being really watched out for. They're mm -hmm. looking out for us. And I don't have a malevolent, negative, nasty view on it, but I do see these agencies and organizations in a couple of ways. One, they're overworked. They don't have near enough staff. They don't have near the resources that they need to really oversee what's going on. And the other thing is. There's just too much money in mm -hmm. big food for yeah. that relationship to be as pure as, as we would like it. So something mm -hmm. I want to mention is there's something called generally recognized as safe or grass. Uh -huh. yeah. And we would assume that a lot of the things, hey, if it's in a packaged food, if it's in a hostess ho-ho or whatever, you know, then anything in there mm -hmm. has passed a, a level of test and study for safety and so on and so on. And uh -huh. that may absolutely not be true at all. I don't yeah. think a lot of people realize that when it comes to, and I'm going to define real food and ultra processed food, but I just want to yeah. lay this groundwork that I don't think a lot of people realize that a lot of the industrial additives, like you say, over 3000 mm -hmm. haven't been passed by the FDA at all. Big food is not required to do so. All mm -hmm. they're required to do is have some reasonable data in house. <laughs> what could go wrong there? Right. <laughs> have some reasonable data in house that whatever this chemical is whatever this additive whatever it is is not harmful they don't have to prove that it's safe they just have to have some good reasonable indication that it's not harmful if right. they do so so maybe they like ate it one time and nothing <laughs> bad happened and this is their reasonable data yeah no i it's it's like exactly what constitutes reasonable data is really cloudy really fuzzy it's not clear and so it can it can be added, and so it's kind of like safe until proven guilty. Uh huh. And I'm like, we have so many of these, and what's not considered is even if that single ingredient mm -hmm. is or has some level of safety to it, what's the impact of that industrial additive that 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 ingredient when we consider all of the thousands of ingredients that are in our food supply that we consume in any given day, week, month, year? Cumulatively, mm -hmm. what's the cumulative effect when we look at hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these right, things right, being consumed? Right. There's no data on that. So right. I'm just saying that. It might be so, okay to eat a ho-ho one time. It might be. 
Absolutely. But you know, maybe uh, not as often as some people are doing it. <laughs> because there's this, there is this cumulative collective additive, you know, whole mm-hmm. all in amount that we're consuming that no one can study or has studied. So, mm-hmm. all right, real food, ultra processed food. I really separate them. Yes, and I separate absolutely. them for, for a number of reasons. And so my working definition of real food is an adaptation. If somebody wants to look for it, they can. <laughs> it's an adaptation from something called the Nova Food Classification System. Nova Food Classification System isn't perfect. It was developed in Brazil, but in my opinion, it is the best food classification system we currently have. And it continues okay. to evolve. There's a lot of research on it. Research with it, be, uh, mm-hmm. where it is being used in the research is coming out literally daily. Um, I really like the direction they're going. All right. So my adaptation, my working definition of real food from that is this. Here we go. Real food is the whole or minimally processed edible parts of plant and animal mm-hmm. where if anything has been added to it, it is only the whole or minimally processed ingredients commonly found in kitchens. Okay. So, you know, just in your, in, so like, oh God, what does that even mean? What he mm-hmm. just said, you know, that's a lot. So like you should be able to pronounce it basically. <laughs> let me, well, and let me address that. There's a little yeah, bit more to it. But... To, <laughs> unless it's quinoa, which could be, who knows? That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Joaquin or. <laughs> right. Q-U-I-N-O-A. How do you say that? So, um, so when it comes to real food, so whole, or, let me say it again, whole or minimally processed edible parts of plant and animal, where if anything's been added to it, it is only whole or minimally processed ingredients commonly found in kitchens. Yeah. So if I was to say, you know, to you, let's say that's a packaged product. So some people might think, oh my gosh, I can never eat anything packaged ever again. Not true. Mm-hmm. Uh, first of all, you can do anything you want. And this isn't a limitation yeah. that, yeah. you know, even ultra processed foods aren't like off limits now because old Dave mm-hmm. said so, you know, it's not it. Right. But if you're looking at like a marinara sauce, a mm-hmm. marinara sauce might be tomatoes, garlic, basil, salt, oregano, all right? Mm -hmm. You know, those types of things. And if you think about those ingredients, you go tomatoes. Right, you know what they all are. You know what they all are, whole or or minimally processed. Anything in there, something commonly found used in kitchens and and all that stuff is whole or minimally processed, good to go. And there Mm -hmm. are a number of things that fit that bill that are packaged and good to go. And of course, you've got your your standard things like, bear with me, you know, chicken breast just by Mm -hmm. itself, apple, you know, yeah. strawberries, vegetables of all kinds, you name it. You know, okay, those yeah. are all the common ones where you go, okay, that's real food. Almost, not quite, almost everything else is quite processed to ultra processed. Right. right. So it, it, here's kind of how I look at it too, just so for, for clarity. And so, some people will say, don't eat it if it has more than five ingredients. Honestly, if it meets the definition, I don't care if it has 50. Right, because they could all be herbs and spices. It could be all herbs and spices. And if you look at herbs and spices, it could be a list, you know, 15, yeah. 18 of them or whatever. Right. Indian food. I feel like Indian food is like the culprit right. there, right? Like right. there's so many herbs and spices in their food. And, so and it's course, so good. Yeah, so good. And so good for you. <laughs> and so good for you, right. And so you look at that and you go, I don't care if it has more than five ingredients. So to your, uh, to your, to your statement, which is very common, don't eat it if you can't pronounce it. Well, because we do have, you know, quinoa and things. Yeah. And, and here's the thing. I don't know what someone's vocabulary is. All I know is if you spin that package around, get off the front of the package, uh-huh. get off the front, because that's just marketing. Right. You know, lo- low fat, high in calcium, you know, blah, 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 whatever. Spin it around and look at the ingredients. If it's got ingredients that you essentially need a chemistry degree to mm-hmm. understand, that is not something commonly right. found in kitchens. Com- yeah. And so once that's it funny, hits that- actually, it- because- when I first, I, in, in my health class in high school, I was first told, you know, don't, don't eat anything you can't pronounce. Well, yeah. I've got, a, I'm pretty good at reading. I've got a pretty good vocabulary. So it's like, I can pronounce that. Right. Right. Yeah. That's the thing. Right. So yeah, yes. I said, I'm the one who said it right. But I was also the one who like fell victim to the statement. Right. Exactly. Hey, listener, do you want a comprehensive yet concise and inexpensive online at your own pace natural birth education course to help you prepare for natural birth, pregnancy and postpartum? Then check out the description below for that and our helpful products guide. Now back to the show. The more reliable is just the the working definition. And if it has whatever in it, 
because I've had people ask me, you know, on, on podcasts, well, give me some examples of ingredients they should avoid. I avoid, I don't answer that question. I'm just not being disrespectful. Mm -hmm. There are 3000 of them. It, it, there's just too many, you know, there's there are some many. things that are more common than others, obviously, but exactly. And I just don't want it to be reductionist where people go, Oh, that's the thing. Caramel color. Oh, yeah. caramel color. no, I don't want people thinking about that one thing, anything in there. It's, it's now ultra processed. Okay. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that is such a helpful definition because I think people don't understand that, especially in our culture of, you know, we, we get everything from the grocery store right. and, and a lot of us, we're not taught how to cook from scratch anymore. And so we don't understand what processed means necessarily. You know, we may walk into the store and be like, oh, it says organic. It right. must be fine. Right. But then you look at the ingredients and it's, it's not things that you even really know what they are, or right. it's ingredients that even aren't great. So tying all of that into mental health, we are what we eat. Yes. And, and if we're not eating properly, then our body doesn't have the nutritions and the vitamins and the micronutrients and the macronutrients and everything that we need to, to sustain our bodies. And when we can't sustain our bodies, then Obviously, like not just our physical bodies, but our our neurological, the neurological parts of our bodies aren't going to work properly. And ultra processed foods don't have a whole lot of nutrition, unfortunately. Yeah. And, and you know, one of the things that they're finding with regard to ultra processed foods is there's kind of something called a nutricentric approach to nutrition. Okay. I don't know and that word, so. Yeah. So nutricentric, you know, um, so nutricentric basically is just kind of looking at and this is how some of the, the manufacturers out there will get us to go, oh, that's probably healthy, which I, again, I can mm -hmm. tell you, I can tell you that I don't look at food as healthy, unhealthy, bad, or good. I've got mm -hmm. a different view of it, but they'll get you to go, oh, that's, that's healthy because it may, it contains the nutrients. And so what are nutrients? Well, there's seven main classes. You've got carbs, proteins, fats, mm -hmm. fiber, water, vitamins, and minerals. Okay. So. I don't know what order I just said those in, but I'll say it That's again, okay. protein, protein, <laughs> protein, carbs, fats, fiber, water, vitamins, and minerals. So if you're looking at nutrients, that's a nutricentric approach. You go, does it supply the vitamins and minerals I need? Mm -hmm. Good. Does it supply fiber? Does it supply this, that? Okay. Mm -hmm. If it supplies those things, then we're supposed to give it a big thumbs up because it is has met the nutrient requirements. It's going to help us nutritionally. Is that important? Yes. Yes. Very important. And I want to make that distinction too between somebody might read that we, you know, we're going we absolutely 100% can get everything we need from food. We never need to supplement with a vitamin. I, I won't get into that, but I will say this. In the United States, we're not as likely to be truly deficient, disease state deficient in a vitamin or mineral. Doesn't mean we won't be, but we're not mm -hmm. as likely. However, there is a different slight, you know, lower level called inadequacy. Mm -hmm. You know, and there are a number of vitamins and minerals where we are uniformly, very broadly across the United States as a population, inadequately supplied yes. with the certain vitamins and minerals. Magnesium right? is one of those. Magnesium being one and of those. Vitamin D being one of those. Both play so heavily in mental health. Yes, absolutely. So nutrients, crazy important. Yes, mm -hmm. we need to you know meet the guidelines. We need to meet minimum at least. And, and maybe beyond minimum, we need to have an optimal intake to mm -hmm. you, for our body to function optimally. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the thing and about- And that's the whole thing that is like so hard. It's such an individual approach. <laughs> it, it is. And, but anyway, I won't, okay, I won't get into that. But as far as ultra processed food goes, what the research is finding is beyond nutrients, separate from nutrients, the negative impact of ultra processed food just from the processing of it itself mm -hmm. is having tremendously negative impacts. Even if people are doing their best to have that front of packaging say contains all of, you know, mm -hmm. a, a daily supply of vitamins and minerals or whatever the nutrients mm -hmm. may be, if it's still ultra processed, we're very likely to suffer non-communicable mm -hmm. disease risk, but also a number of mental health issues. Yeah. And they're, and they're literally saying today in the research, they're using the language that says the processing itself. Mm -hmm. Well, well no, go ahead. sometimes, sometimes those, those vitamins and minerals may have been placed in that food, prob 
probably if it's ultra processed, it's not naturally in there. It's been added like the chemical or the lab created version of that, that vitamin or that mineral. And then we have to think about how just because it's in the food doesn't mean our body's going to be able to absorb it. And I think that's where that big play of that ultra processing comes in because it makes it harder for our bodies to absorb the vitamins or minerals that might be in there. Or even if we're eating something ultra processed with a natural food, that processing, you know, whatever it's doing to our bodies can still make it so our bodies aren't absorbing all of the good stuff that we take in too. Yeah. Ultra processed food impacts our gut. Absolutely. It impacts our gut in in a negative way. And yes. And so much of our health is centered around our gut. Our gut. Including mental health. I believe, I I think it's, I believe the the number is correct. 90 to 95% of serotonin is, Mm -hmm. is made in the gut. I've heard that it's a high number. So yeah, it's really high. Why don't you tell people what serotonin is? Well, you know, serotonin, you know, being a neurotransmitter is got a number of functions, but it's, it's what we would associate kind of with a general, general happiness or pleasant state or more of a centered kind of uh, grounded, you know, kind of, kind of state. That's why there are, you know, the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, SSRIs are, are very uh, popular and used and beneficial for, for the right person. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, you know, not being a neurologist, I know the basics of, you know, neurotransmitters right. and dopamine, serotonin and so forth, but I'm more like macro view when mm-hmm. it comes to ultra processed food on mental right. health in general. It just, I, I'm not kidding you. The research published peer reviewed research can, is coming out daily, weekly, monthly now. Mm-hmm. And I have yet to find a single study come out where they were measuring uh, comparing groups on mm-hmm. ultra processed food consumption where mm-hmm. they found a positive on mental health for the group that consumed more. Yeah. Not one it's- study says, and one of the things I love about uh, studies that are looking at ultra processed foods collectively is they're not trying to center in on one ingredient. Uh huh. It's just look all in. Yeah. Because that's how we have to think all yeah. in. You know, if it's ultra processed food, the more of those we consume, the more likely we are to suffer from everything from migraines, moodiness, mm-hmm. tiredness, anxiety, depression. The way we uh, handle our stress, even even just yes. basic day to day stress, is harder right. to handle. So, how does all of this tie into pregnancy and postpartum? Right, because that's what we're trying to do today. Yeah. And because many moms are already just be, just pregnancy in and, of, in and of itself is such a physical toll on the body because you're yes. growing you're growing a human and that human even, whether it's inside your body or outside of your body it needs the proper nutrition and so yes. when it's inside of your body it's feeding off of your nutrition and your body is smart your body will give your baby what it needs before it gives you what you need it will take it from you and give it to your baby, and which is which is great. It's you know it's it's a very smart design, but it puts all of us moms at a higher risk of anxiety, depression, prenatal rage, prenatal OCD, just all of those mental disorders, and then that carries over into the postpartum period as well. And so, if our nutrition isn't good during pregnancy. And then it's likely not going to be good during postpartum and even pre-pregnancy. There are studies coming out that showing your pre-pregnancy, you should be planning for pregnancy and eating for pregnancy before you're pregnant. Yes. And it's because you have to have that buildup of nutrients and vitamins in your body to be able to properly grow your baby and then to be recover from growing your baby and, and for breastfeeding, if that's what you're choosing to do. So that's why it's just so important to understand how all of these ultra processed foods really, while they may be really convenient, and I mean, seriously, like we live in a busy world, sometimes you have to grab for the ultra processed food, sure, right? But it's just trying to minimize that as much as possible, because in the long run, it is going to be so much better for your body and your baby. It's going to make you feel so much better, not just physically, but mentally. And I mean, you're a dude. So you haven't, you haven't physically felt postpartum, but I'm sure you have seen it and you know that your mental state postpartum is so much of making it through that postpartum period is mental. Yes. It is how you're thinking of things and how you're handling things. And if you're 
mental state is not good, then it's going to be really, really hard. And it's already yeah. hard enough, even in a right. good mental state. Yes, yes. In, in total agreement and, and with total respect and acknowledgement that, again, being a dude, you know, I, <laughs> I, I never I never had to do it. I've got three grown kids, 28 to 33. So you've seen I, it. I've seen, I was in the room, but I was just there. My wife was the one who did, you know, she did, you know, all the amazing. And then afterwards, she's the one that felt, and I was just there supporting it, you know, the best I could. We Now I've got two grandkids. Even if you're doing everything right, it's like you said, it's hard enough as it is, mm -hmm. but a lot of people underappreciate the impact that something they can truly control Mm -hmm. You know, like you said, it's not about going to zero ultra processed food, but I always tell in, in any of the clients I work with and I work with over the years, I've been doing this for 30 years, over the yeah. years, I've worked with a lot of women who got pregnant while they were on my program or they came to me when they were initially pregnant and so on. And then mm -hmm. afterwards, and it's funny because as I think about it, I hadn't thought about it till just now. It's so funny that I know kids names that weren't here prior to the, my client being in the program and I yeah. followed them they're now 10, 12, 15 years uh -huh. old and they weren't born when that my client, you know, came to me. That's you so know? funny. Anyway, there's an underappreciation for the impact of minimizing, mm -hmm. let's, let's put it this way, increasing real food, minimizing ultra processed food yeah. on mental health. And a, a lot of people, pregnant, postpartum or not, they'll go at some point, if it gets bad enough, they'll mm -hmm. go and they'll seek help. And yes, which is good. fantastic. I, I recommend that. If good. you need help, please. you should get it. Please do. Yes, 100%. I always say that we don't want to handicap the physician or the psychologist or whoever by living on ultra processed food, which is so mm -hmm. important on how it affects your mental health, because they're going to possibly, possibly add on a drug, but that mm -hmm. drug is being added on. If they do, it's being mm -hmm. added on to all of these additives and, and mm -hmm. the processing and the chemicals that the drug just has a harder time working. Yeah. And the, and the other factors that may have been, I'm going to say may have been the root cause mm -hmm. is they're still there. Right. So I just want to say, I just want to encourage, you know, anyone to move in that direction to real mm -hmm. food, at least by the def the working definition I gave, minimize the ultra processed foods, the other thing I would say is, again, pregnant, postpartum, or just mm -hmm. just anyone, sometimes the mental health impact is so fast. Mm -hmm. it's It can be just a few days mm -hmm. where you go, I've had this black cloud over me. I'm old enough where Eeyore is something, you know, Winnie the Pooh. So, you know, mm -hmm. I do my Eeyore, <laughs> you know, where you just feel, you just feel blue. You yeah. know, you just feel like, oh, it's a black cloud hanging over my, I've been there myself. Yeah. So when I say that, this is not in any way, shape, or form making light. It's very serious. It's miserable when you're in that state yeah. and things are just dark cloud over you all the time. It's not impossible mm -hmm. for the benefits to happen fast enough where three, four, five days later you go, wait, there's a blue sky up there. Yeah. And I'm not saying that now everything's perfect, the world, but right. you go, Oh my gosh, I don't feel that sense of doom and gloom and I don't feel yeah. so low. And you're, you know, I tested it on myself because I went through a period of depression mm -hmm. 12 years ago or so. And I was like, it can't be, I mean, it can't be processed food. I mean, I'm eating low fat, nutrient rich processed food, you know, mm -hmm. not all the time, but X amount. And I was, ugh, I was down. I was like, why am I down? I got life's good, marriage, mm -hmm. kids, everything was fine. I, yeah. I, there was nothing. And I and went, that's it. I'm going all real food. Yeah. And th within a few days. It's amazing. It approved. And so I've seen clients do the same thing over and yeah. over and over. So before we finish up, what are some of your tips for, you know, helping to incorporate more food, especially in the busy, busy time of pregnancy and postpartum, but any busy time, what are yeah. some tips? So one of the things I would say is, you know, any positive change, give yourself a pat on the back. It's great. Mm -hmm. Just start, start small. Um, batch. If you're going to prepare some things at home, which I, I recommend as best mm -hmm. you can, my clients that do it the, the most, usually the most successfully, they batch cook so that they do it mm -hmm. over a few hour period. But then a lot of things are set up for many, many days at that point. They've got stuff mm -hmm. that's grab and go ready. Um, they've got stuff prepared. So if 
you can batch cook and have stuff that's grab and go ready to go through that. That's, uh, that's, that's a really good thing to do. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I, I just want to say that a, a mindset of instead of necessarily taking away or removing things, I would say, mm-hmm. you know, add things, you know, mm-hmm. add uh, fresh fruit. Yeah, add, if you usually eat a bowl of cereal for breakfast, add a banana to it. Yeah, yeah, it, exactly. <laughs> start exactly. there, start there. Start, yeah, just start where you are and just try to just start adding things that are more real food oriented. What can happen with that is real food is has a lot of volume to it. Yeah. Whereas ultra processed food is usually low volume, high calorie. Yeah. So it's almost impossible to overeat vegetables. And one of the things I would say is, I find a lot of clients that don't that came that come to me who maybe aren't eating a lot of real food. Mm-hmm. I say they're so lucky if they like vegetables to start with. Mm-hmm. And some of them, a lot of them do. Now, some of them don't. And I get that. But if they do, oh, you're in such an you have such a huge advantage. Yeah. Otherwise, I say that there are ways to hide vegetables to yeah. add them. So yes. add them to stronger tasting things, stronger yeah. flavored things, soups, chilies. Yep scrambled eggs, whatever, add vegetables, add riced cauliflower. Rice mm-hmm. cauliflower is just magical. I mean, yeah. in the sense that it's like, it, you talk about quick, you know, uh-huh. steam it four and a half minutes, put it in a stir fry, put it in chili, put it in your eggs, yeah. put it in something. And what it'll do is you'll feel fuller because mm-hmm. of the fiber and the, the uh, nutrition <laughs> and the nutrition in the cauliflower, instead of just whatever it is, you know, yeah. that you had anyway. So the, those are just kind of some of the things. And keep it on hand. Huh? Keep keep the good stuff on hand. Oh, yeah. Make keep sure you're hand. buying it and keeping it in the house. Right. You know, you can't eat something that's not in your house. Right. And, you know, if you're going to have, let's say that peanut butter is okay. Let's say yeah. that you're not allergic to it. You don't have anything. Just in my head, you know, just a simple thing. It's like keep peanut butter in the house. Just make yeah. sure it says peanuts and salt. Right. Exactly. That's like, that's like I say, just bringing in more of the real food. It's not, uh-huh. you can't have that anymore. You can't have this. There's no can't. It's, I think, with that increased awareness, it's yeah. just trying to make that better choice, knowing that Absolutely. you're doing. I know that personally, I know my wife raising the kids and everything else. It's there's so much selflessness mm-hmm. that goes into what my wife, mother you know, of our mm-hmm. kids and in any mother that I that I see my mother, I mean, just on and mm-hmm. on and on give, 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 give. And mm-hmm. it's so important, but to be able to do that the best, which I know is, mm-hmm. is critically important, you really do have to take as good a care as yourself as you can so that you yes. have what you want to give yes. to others. Um, Absolutely. There is a reason the flight attendants tell you to put your own mask on first. Yes. Yeah. That's such that's a good it. point. I think that's a good, a good point to end on too. And then just adding that it's a process. It is. It's a it process. Is. We don't expect you to jump in all or nothing. I mean, if you're the all or nothing type of person, then go for it if you can handle it. But most of us are not that person. Most of us have to take those baby steps. Like you said, adding the banana to your cereal, making sure you're buying it to just having it in the house, hiding it in your soups and things like that and yeah. prepping it ahead of time. Good chat. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, it's it it was it was a lot of fun. Thanks for having me on. Of course. And listeners, I'm gonna put some links in the description below. So make sure you check those out. And if you have any questions, you can contact me at contact at the naturalbirthsite.com. And I'll also have David's information in, in the links below as well. So you can check those out if you want to. Talk to you guys in the next episode. Thanks for listening. Hi, Rachel Manns again. If you want to learn more, please subscribe to and rate this podcast and head over to thenaturalbirthsite.com to check out our online natural birth education course, birth story blog, YouTube channel, and more.